When ordinary punches, kicks, and throws aren't doing the job, that's when it's time to turn to a special move. They're more powerful, look better, and you usually get to shout something cool when you're doing them. Show them, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Sometimes, however, video game characters get a bit carried away. I mean, there's no way that these ridiculously over-the-top special moves were necessary. Injustice Gods Among Us is a video game that raises an interesting question about superheroes. When a genuine metahuman with super strength is fighting a regular human, do they have a moral duty to rein in their strength so as not to harm their opponent? The good ones. I mean, Sinestro ain't give a damn. <laughs> Apparently, the answer is no, if Superman's super move is anything to go by. Bearing in mind that this is a move that can be performed on regular humans with no powers whatsoever, Superman punches his opponent into space, then punches them back out of space where they burn up on re-entry, then smash into the hard, unforgiving ground. Yeah, that'll teach that entirely human cat burglar. And that former psychiatrist with very little combat training. And that troubled clown who clearly needs help more than he needs to be punched into space. <laughs> Look, maybe Soups was just having a bad day and he'll tone it down for the sequel. I mean, at least he's keeping it to within the Earth's atmosphere this time? The power of the ancients. To battle our Skies of Arcadia tells the story of Vice, an air pirate who is trying to stop an evil empire from reviving ancient weapons with the potential to destroy the world. Which is why it's so baffling as to why him and his team would use Prophecy, a special move that, by my reckoning, would definitely destroy the world. In this move, Vice and his team call upon the power of the ancients to battle their foe, in this case, a scrub trash mob. The team then fly into space, uh, possess the moon, I think is what's going on here, and then crash the moon into the planet, causing massive damage to their enemies. And obviously the planet. The asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs was only about six miles across, and this moon is way, way bigger than that. Not to mention the serious problems with tides, ocean life, and the planet's orbit it would cause. All in all, probably slight overkill for this group of small, unthreatening monsters. I wish they were all that easy. Still haven't transcended humanity, huh? You lack discipline. You haven't transcended your humanity. You've thrown it away! The various fighting tournaments of the Street Fighter series are tough and brutal, sure, and a lot of the participants have magic powers that could really do people a lot of damage. <laughs> Right, thank you. But unlike Mortal Kombat's fatalities, you always have the feeling that these are things people could walk away from. Apart from Akuma's Raging Demon. The Raging Demon, known in Japan as Shun Goku Satsu, meaning Flash Prison Murder, or Blinking Prison Killer, is just as lovely as those names make it sound. Once activated, Akuma glides towards his opponent before telling them to die 1,000 deaths, which seems like more deaths than anyone should be suffering in a well-run and safely organized fighting tournament. He then punches them like a million times. Die 1,000 deaths! This is Messerts. Honestly, Akuma, you always have to take it too far. You've really soured the party atmosphere we had going here at this festival at the Old Temple. Hey, who are we ambushing? Bad guys! Wanna help? In Brutal Legend, hero roadie Eddie Riggs' special moves take the form of face-melting guitar solos that in some cases actually literally melt people's faces off. <laughs> That's pretty extreme, but for our money, the most over-the-top has to be the Bring It On Home solo, which, when played, summons a zeppelin which then crashes onto the battlefield, exploding, setting everyone on fire, and killing them. Oh no! Seems a little extreme, Eddie. Also, who's piloting that thing? Are they cool with being summoned to the battlefield and being made to crash into people? Are there passengers on board? My god, this is the worst disaster since... Well, since Eddie last played this solo about 30 seconds ago. Yeah! Oh, yeah! 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 That's All the right! Stuff. I didn't think we were gonna make it that time. Huh? Hey, 
Engaging hostile. The not at all annoyingly named Guilty Gear Exerd games give their characters excellent cinematic special moves called instant kills, which do exactly what they say and range from the quirkily piratical. You have to have a sort of honor, don't you? Destroy. To the downright confusing. Ah, you already made the mistake. The mistake that will cost you. Boring. Our favourite, however, is Potemkin's move, Infernal Tour, in which he jumps into the air and drills his opponent into the ground with a spinning pile driver. So far, so Zangief, but then Potemkin smashes his inverted opponent with a punch so hard it sends him straight through the centre of the earth, popping out in some tropical location on the other side of the world. Feeling you? I mean, even if you survive that, that's the fight over, as by the time your opponent has figured out where they are, had some money wired to them, taken a flight and got a cab back to the fight venue, they'll definitely have been counted out. Probably better off just staying there. Looks nice. There's a palm tree and everything. This goes on your feet. Knights of the Round is a summon from Final Fantasy VII that's like calling your friends to help you out in a fight, only you have 13 friends and they're the legendary Knights of the Round Table. It takes absolutely ages because they form an orderly queue, then take it in turns to whack your opponent with their signature weapons, ranging from swords, to axes, to spears, to magic. Then King Arthur turns up and smacks them in the face with Excalibur. <laughs> According to Arthurian legend, King Arthur will return when he is most needed, which is apparently when Cloud is fighting this small robot. Ready? You should feel honored. Now! Sound that bell! You get to dance with me. The, the Wheel of Fate, Fate is turning! Makoto Nanaya from the BlazBlue series of fighting games is a kind of goofy squirrel girl, which is why it's so surprising that her astral finish special move in BlazBlue Continuum Shift involves her punching the moon in half. This move, known as Planet Crusher, sees Makoto punch her opponent 29 times, then, as a sort of afterthought, uppercut the moon so hard it breaks apart into five separate pieces. I think your opponent was probably done after the 29 punches, Makoto. Was the moon uppercut really necessary? Ugh, you're all squiggly and icky! You make me sick! Ugh. No, okay, fair enough. Effort. Those were seven over-the-top special moves that weren't strictly necessary given the circumstances. Got a favourite extreme move we missed? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more videos like this from Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching!